key levels within trading. This is essentially the main focal point in your trading. Every time you take a trade, it is going to be off of a key level. And where you have your stop loss and take profit placement, they will also be at your key levels. Hence why without key levels, you won't be able to determine your higher time frame buys and also your entry placements and where you would look for your entries. Now, when I say key levels, what I simply mean are the PD arrays. Essentially, these are the key PD array levels that you're going to encounter from first to last. Old highs and old lows are always the last key levels you will encounter in a PD array matrix. So based on this PD array matrix here that makes up your key levels, this is where you could anticipate for price to come back into, to look for an entry, and then this is where you could place your take profits and stop losses. The more PD arrays that overlap with each other, for example, here yeah, you have an order block that also overlaps with a mitigation block that also overlaps with a volume imbalance over here, which is simply just a form of a liquidity void or fair value gap. But essentially, this key level right here will be extremely significant because it is overlapping with three PD arrays. So this, in a bullish scenario, this is ideally going to stay protected. If it doesn't stay protected, this is where you can anticipate for possibly a reversal because of how significant that key level is. Vice versa. If you was bullish and you saw the same thing, but this time in a bearish key level, so for example, if you look here, you have that imbalance over there. This is where you could expect a much more significant retracement before that continuation higher. Considering that retracement doesn't give you a reversal on the higher time frame. If that's the case, that is going to be the key focus in today's video. At every single key level you get, you are going to expect some sort of a reaction. Depending on what the higher time frame direction is, that reaction could either be significant or minor. But that doesn't change the fact that because you are going to get a reaction nonetheless, this is where you could have some sort of an entry. And not only just your entries, but also it will assist you in anticipating where price is going to head to next. Because if it is a bearish key level and you wasn't sure about the direction of your higher time frame or the direction in general, if it gives you a minor reaction off of that bearish key level, it's likely going to be a retracement before continuation higher probably. Or in a better scenario, if it completely disrespects, because if it has a major reaction off of that bearish key level, it's likely that that key level is anticipated to be protected. And because it is anticipated to be protected after you had a major reaction off of that key level, that is where you would shift your direction from bullish, if you was bullish before, to now bearish. Or if it gives you a minor reaction, that is showing you that key level is likely not going to hold. And if it completely disrespects that key level, which is also a reaction by the way, that is of course going to be a continuation of a bullish market structure, assuming you was bullish before. Again, the same thing applies if you was bearish. The scenario is just going to be inverted. These are your PD arrays. The more PD arrays that overlap with each other, the more significant that key level is. But if you only have one PD array, then that's fine. That is still a key level. Because at each of these PD arrays, there is an abundance of liquidity that price comes into to either accumulate more positions before distributing it higher or pairing up their existing positions with counterparty liquidity to exit out of their positions for potentially take profit. Hence why you get the two functions in price, rebalancing old efficiencies and seeking new liquidity. Right, so if you look here, on the weekly right now, from this to here, it would be fair to say that price isn't really having strong conviction in one direction. It's not so clear whether we're going to continue bearish or bullish. If you look previously, this is your external range liquidity. External range high here, external range low here. If you draw the range, the bulk of the move is essentially just happening within the 50% level. So price is consolidating right now. But that doesn't mean you can't be taking any trades. You just have to zoom in closer and look at the key levels where you can anticipate some sort of a reaction off of. Yeah, you have this bullish order block that price comes into and it gives you a bullish reaction. This is where you could look to enter into your trades. This red box over here. This red box took out this swing high, which is in the form of an old high. Again, this is another key level. If you ignore this look back range for now, ignore the fact that this came into this massive order block before we give you the reaction. If you focus solely on it taking out this old high, after it takes out an old high, which is in the form of seeking new liquidity, 
This is where you can anticipate some sort of a retracement to possibly rebalance some form of an inefficiency. And that's exactly what you get here. You get a strong retracement and it takes out this old low. After taking out this old low, which is again, another form of your key level, you get another reaction. So from this, from here to here, that is where you can look for your entries to go long. From here to down here, that is where you can look for entries to go short. And the whole process just repeats. Every time it comes into a key level, you are anticipating some sort of a reaction. And when you get that reaction, that is where you're going to take the majority of your trades. This one comes higher. Again, you have another key level here, a bearish order block or a mitigation block. But because this is one candle on this relative time frame, it's going to be a bearish order block, right? Price comes into that key level and it gives you a movement lower. So you can start to get the idea of where you can anticipate reactions from. And if price on the lower time frame realigns with that reaction, that is where you can look for entries for your trade. Because if you look here, price also has an order block over here. But the thing is, you don't actually entertain any trades until it gives you that realignment to go bullish, which is what you get here. When you have this bullish candle closure, once you have that bullish candle closure, that is showing you on the lower time frame that price has realigned to go bullish from here, reacting off a discount key level. Because in trading and within the charts, if you use every single PD array, then there will be a significantly large number of key levels. Yeah. This leg alone. Right, you have an imbalance, you have a bullish order block, and then even down here, you have another bullish order block with a rejection block over here, re-delivered rebalance. And even if you want to go deeper, you have an inverted fair value gap over here. Right, so you can see from this leg alone, there is approximately four to five key levels. It's going to be extremely stupid to take trades every time price comes into a key level. That is why your lower time frame always comes into play because you're looking for that realignment. Now, just because I'm using the weekly and daily doesn't mean you can't use the daily at the four hour and so on. My weekly is just my higher time frame. My daily for now is my lower time frame. Price is fractal and it's relative to the time frame you're on. So if your higher time frame was the four hour, you could use the 15 minute or the one hour as your lower time frame. It still moves the same as me using the weekly and the daily, right? But if you look here, when price came into this imbalance again, it didn't give you a bullish market structure break to the upside, right? There was no market reversal there to begin with until it swept this low. Remember, that is an old low on your weekly time frame. Until it swept that low, which is a key level, it gives you that market structure break. So once it gives you that market structure break, that is where you're going to validify this key level in holding. It's as simple as that. You take note of every single key level and depending on how price reacts off of that key level, AKA you drop down to a lower time frame, whether it gives you a market reversal or not, that is where you can start to entertain your trades. That essentially all trading is. So here, you can have an entry. Stop loss there. And your TP could be at a logical area. And again, the price is fractal. So the reason why your stop loss is here, because that is an old low. This is your last line of defense in the PDRA matrix. If this key level goes, then it's likely we're going to get a complete market reversal to go bearish. And this bullish market structure break is no longer valid. And that is how you can start to use your key levels in your stop loss placement. Your stop loss should always be at key levels where if price breaks through it, your entire trade idea becomes invalid. Is that a level where once price has a full body closure past that level, if you was looking for longs, you will no longer be looking for longs. That is how you need to utilize the key levels to determine your stop loss placement. And it's the same thing for your take profit. You have a number of key levels here that you're anticipating for price to come towards after you had this bullish market structure break. But ideally, your overall target should be at a place where if price was to continue higher, that is where it should break, which is basically your old highs in a bullish market structure, such as this. Because in a bullish basic market structure, old highs should constantly be disrespected if it was to continue higher. But that doesn't mean you can't have immediate targets, such as these relatively equal highs, or this trend line liquidity over here. But your overall draw should always be at places where if price breaks through that, that is showing you a clear continuation of the trend. So let's say your take profit was here. If you play price out, this is what it does. It reverses on you and takes out this key level. So as you can see here, we didn't take out this key level, which would signify a continuation of the bullish trend. And instead, we took out this key level, which signifies a reversal to go from bullish to bearish. And that brings me on to my next point. Utilizing key levels to give you a determination of where price is heading toward. We had our first example here. 
The most extreme key levels will always be your old highs and old lows. In a bullish scenario, if old highs continues to become disrespected, that means you're continuing that bullish trend. If for whatever reason, an old low gets disrespected, that is where you could anticipate for a market reversal to go from bullish to bearish. Vice versa in a bearish scenario, right? Old lows should constantly be disrespected if you want to see a continuation of the trend. However, if an old high gets disrespected, that is where you can anticipate a reversal to go from bearish to bullish. There's your extreme scenario. But your internal scenarios will always be the PDRAs in between them. So, like I mentioned before, that could be your mitigation block, order blocks, fair value gaps, liquidity voids, breaker blocks, and so on. The key levels that are in line with your higher time frame direction should continue to support that higher time frame direction, aka stay protected. And the key levels that oppose your higher time frame direction, that is where you want to see it get disrespected. But that doesn't mean you can't expect a retracement off of them. Because that retracement is to simply accumulate more positions before distributing price lower or higher, depending on your higher time frame direction. So if you have a look at this scenario over here, like I mentioned, yeah, old lows are constantly being disrespected. But now you get a market reversal to this old high, or you could use this one over here. This one would be your market structure shift. This one would be your market structure break. But you had a market structure break over here. So on a higher time frame, we have now switched from bearish to bullish. That means every key level that supports that higher time frame should stay protected. Every key level that opposes that higher time frame should stay disrespected. This, this, and this, old highs. And then you have your mitigation blocks, as well as your fair value gaps. Right, you get the idea. All of those opposing key levels, price should come up to. It could give you a minor retracement to accumulate more positions, but overall, it should completely disrespect those key levels. The reason why those are important is because when you anticipate for a, re for a retracement, you could either catch the short-term retracement move, in this scenario, a short-term sell, or you could wait for price to retrace into a supporting key level to look for that realignment, to go bullish, and then look to catch the move higher. Your take profit would be at the next key level. That is how you can start to frame your trades. Hence why you shouldn't only just look at the supporting key levels because the opposing key levels provide you with places where you can anticipate a retracement or places where you can place your take profit. So here, we took out this old high. That is where you could anticipate for a retracement. Where could our retracement come back into? This key level, which supports your bullish direction. Now, how will we validate this key level? Because if you look below here, we also have these key levels that price could come back into. So how do we validate this? We drop down into a lower time frame. You look for that market structure break, which is exactly what you get there. And from here, you can look for an entry, stop loss below this key level. Because if price breaks through that low, it's likely we're going to continue deeper. And I would no longer be looking for longs on the daily time frame. And where would my take profit be? At the next key level. So it could be this one over here. The reason why your take profits would be at the next key level, because if price was to continue higher, these key levels should ideally get disrespected. And there's a much more likelihood of price continuing higher because you had this market structure break. But not only that, but also, like I said, a lot of the times you get a retracement off of these key levels or some sort of a reaction. And that reaction could either be a retracement which takes you out of your stop loss, for example, before it continues higher, or that reaction could just be a complete reversal after it has accumulated enough short positions above this high. Hence why your take profits should always be at those type of key levels. And stop loss, like I said, low key levels which you would anticipate for price to reverse if it takes out that key level. Maybe look here, taps here, and as you can see it continues higher for take profit. If you continue playing price out, you can see after taking out that key level and tapping into the one above, what does it do? It gives you a pretty strong reaction, right? It's a pretty deep reaction, but again, you have another supporting key level over here, which supports your bullish price action. Because your price action, the direction is clearly bullish after you had this market structure break. Price has shown no signs of a complete market reversal yet. So you could still look for longs though. Dropping down to daily. Look for that market reversal. You get that market reversal. Takes out this old high. Your stop loss could be over here. Entry above there, the next key level now that has printed. Because when price has retraced, it gives you another old high, right? So if it was to continue higher, this should stay protected and this should stay disrespected. Going back onto the daily. That would have swept you up, but look here. 
It didn't have a full body closure past that old low. Remember what I said, to solidify an invalidation level, you always want to see it have a full body closure past that old high old low. It doesn't heal. That probably would have taken you out of your trade, but your trade idea still stays valid. You can still look for longs, again. Gives you an arm market structure break. Your entry could be here. Stop loss below this low or this low. Because of how relatively close it is, it doesn't really matter. The price takes out this low, it's likely we're going to take out this low. And then you can look for the same thing again. And as you can see here, it takes out that old high. Even though it took out your previous invalidation level, but it didn't have a full body closure past it. As you can see here, this one it has a full body closure past it. So that's how you identify and utilize key levels in your trading. Two ways you could go about it. Play off the reactions or use the reactions to give you a sense of where the market is going to head towards. It's as simple as that. You don't have to make it any more complicated. I hope you guys found this video helpful. If you did, please like and subscribe. If you have any questions or suggestions for future videos, please leave them below in the comments. And like always, take care and I'll see you guys in the next one.